thank you for joining us today on uh, our native plant tour to see what's blooming in June. Uh, we'll be doing this from time to time and showing you the, the gorgeous beauty of nature, talking about the sustainability, which is God's plan for making everything work together. Uh, each plant has not only does it have its own pollinator, which is wonderful and which we should protect by not spraying and protecting the habitat, but it also provides food for something, which provides food for something else, which provides food for something else. And in the end, it keeps us alive. We'll have fun. I'm Cheryl Owen, uh, and I live on the Pontotoc Ridge in New Albany, Mississippi. Okay, on the this this is my white bed, and we're talking natives. The native over on the far right is uh, Hydrangea quercifolia, which is oak leaf hydrangea, and it's a brilliant white when it first blooms, and then it fades now to kind of greenish, and then it will turn pink with with more sun. Next to it is the bottle brush buckeye, which is also a native, uh, just a butterfly magnet. This is a little bit late in the day for the butterflies. They like it in the hot, hot sun. And the one that's most common, and you see all the pollinators on it. Fantastic pollinators, uh, natives are. The butterfly that's most common this time of year on it is the um, um, a swallowtail, one swallowtail, can't remember right now. Then down here deep into the woods, you see that's uh, that's hydrangea arborescens, which is another native plant, and you can see one down there that's white blooming down there. Um, they're white in the beginning. Then they fade to green. This is the one, Hydrangea, if you get this rock right here in front of you. When I got this rock, there was an oak leaf Hydrangea growing in that tr in that crack. <laughs> and what there, when uh, pioneers came to America, they practice medicines by two methods. One was trial and error. Oftentimes, sometimes they died, sometimes they got sick, sometimes they got better. And because of that, people learned what worked and what didn't work. And the other was a doctrine of signatures. And that meant if a native plant looked like a part of the body, God must have meant for us to use it for that body part in its illness. So when I got this rock, there was an oak leaf hydrangea growing in here, and I put it there to explain the doctrine of signatures. Now why do you think, or what do you think, the Native Americans or the pioneers would have used oak leaf hydrangea bar if they use the doctrine of signatures. Considering that this plant right here was growing in that crack. I don't know. To crack kidney and gallstones. Do you know that today, even today, you can order the root, mainly of this arborescence, but you can order the roots of these native hydrangeas for uh, prostate and bladder problems. Oh, wow. So, it's a fun thing. It is a fun. fun thing. Okay, these are non-native. These are caladiums. And that gives me summertime color. And I place them in, uh, I place them in, in among the uh, hellebore foliage. Hellebores bloom in February. And then fade they, they're either purple, mine are purple, white, or pink, because I have three varieties. And then they all turn pink in March, after blooming in February. 
and then in April, uh, they all turn lime green. And then when they turn brown, like this one you see right here, they will drop their seeds and fall off. And I'll put pine straw over these. I, in fact, I got the pine straw for it. I lost a tree, a 150-year-old tree, that reached from the huge oak over there over to these and was over the house and I had deep shade. So things are changing. I'm, this year I'm going to be, I'm going to be discovering uh, advantages of sunshine and uh, things that won't live in the sunshine. That's the tiger swallowtail. And then the zebra swallowtail often comes. He's, he's a product of the pawpaw tree. But look at the pollinators. Pollinators are so important to sustainability. Oh, the bees, of course, are non-native. And we talk about losing the bees, which is a real possibility, and we really need them for pollinating crops. But native plants are sustainable, and each native plant has its own pollinator. And those pollinators will keep the native plants going, and that's one of the big pluses of sustainability is keeping your native pollinators going and of course the, re the way we do that is not use insecticides and preserve their habitat. And when it's in the sunshine it's when the butterflies mostly seriously yeah and these will only bloom for a few days. Okay, the seeds you see right here, Ken built that in uh, 96, I think, after the ice storm. The ice storm left lots and lots of good cedar wood. It's made all this furniture, which you'll see. That's the stump of the big tree that we lost, and those, um, those little owls are art pieces by Bob Grissom. This particular one that you're filming right now is called Incredible. That's a selection of the native arborescence. This big bunch right here is Amsonia hubrecti. It, it turns the most gorgeous gold in the fall. This is a black-eyed Susan, or one of the Rubeckias. There are many, many, many Rubeckias. This is a gray-headed coneflower, or um, retibita. It's called. And then down here by the Rudbeckia, there's a little purple and yellow one. That's called Mexican hat. This is one of the flocks coming on. All flocks are native. And several flocks, it's several, several different flocks have already bloomed. But this is the one that's the mainstay of the summer garden. And you see it's coming on here.
the tall blue is campanula or um, tall bellflower is a common name for it. And the orange you see over in there. Can you see the orange over in there? Uh, this is about gone in here. That is Asclepias tuberosa or butterfly weed. And of course, monarchs. You think butterflies, butterflies, and monarchs. It is a milkweed. So this is the only place that monarchs will uh, put their... Yeah. Monarchs have to have milkweed. Mm -hmm. But now other butterflies use it too. If, but if, monarchs can't exist if we don't have milkweed. That's right. There are several kinds of milkweed. This is just one. One kind. I think this, this is not native, but I think this is a wonderful plant for the garden, and I saw somebody wrote about this. I don't know, I've read about it in the last day. This is Verbena banariensis. And for some reason, it has kind of died out, but it, it will come back. It reseeds, reseeds handily. Are the lilies considered natives? No, these are not. We passed by one up there that is native, that looks like these, called mm -hmm. the Turk's Cap. These are tiger lilies. Right? These are tiger lilies, that's right. If you stayed here till it started getting dark, mm -hmm. that one will open. That's the only one I think tonight. Maybe this, no, there are a couple. These will open in front of your eyes. I mean, you can just watch them as they open up at dark. For the night pollinator? Yeah, for the night pollinator. Oh, sustainability, God's plan. You see how much this looks like the tiger lily? Mm -hmm. But this is a native called Turk's cap. See the world leaves? When it opens up, it'll be orange, but it'll have a green star in the center. What is it? Okay, that's seed pod of Baptisia. That's native, it's a native plant. This particular one is blue. But that's the seed pot of the Baptisia, blue indigo. This is plantain, a giant one. This is one that doesn't get mowed. And you wreck it, but it's a good one for identification. See the parallel veins in the leaves? All plantain will have those parallel veins. There's a narrow species, and there's the wide one. And this is probably one of the most medicinal plants known to man. Oh, we could tell many stories about the healing properties of this plant. It was so healing that it was brought by uh, the colonists and spread all across the United States, given to the Indians who spread it everywhere and called it white man's footprint. Such a healing, healing medicinal plant. As you mentioned, for spider bites in particular. And sometime we could talk about, it will not, the, this is the bloom in fact. 
it is blooming right now. And you can mow them down and they'll still come back. But that's one that I leave in the flower bed and just let grow to its potential so that it's easy to recognize the leaves. How would you, could you seed one or anything like that to spread them or do they just? They're everywhere. They're in my backyard. It's a Come weed, they're up. everywhere. <laughs> um, dig one up and take it to your house and next year you'll have them all over the place <laughs> because of these seeds here. But it, it is, it's a plant that if you have a spider bite or an insect bite, you can put, you chew it, you have to release the, uh, the goody. Mm -hmm. Put it in your mouth and go chomp, 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 chomp. Put it over your cut, your bite, whatever. Put a Band-Aid over it and it will heal it. it. It will heal it fairly quickly. He had 105 temperature and was having rigors. And his leg was swollen tremendously. And when we got the jeans off, there was a red streak going to his growing. This was on his thigh. And he was so sick, he wouldn't go to the emergency room. So I thought, well, I teach about this, I'll go get some. And I did, brought it to a boil, crushed it, brought it to a boil, did not boil it, put the top on it, and let it steep for 20 minutes, put a cloth in it as a poultice, and then put the leaf on top, and put the poultice on top of that. And within 25 minutes, the heat was coming out. Some of the redness was disappearing. He had a huge pone that they usually cut, have to cut out because of the rotting. It never rotted. And we'll and we'll do we'll do wonderful colors in the fall, and we'll do seeds and nuts and berries. The beauty berries it blooms, and this will have purple purple berries, like a cluster of berries, space cluster of berries, space cluster of berries. But this is the bloom on it now. And this is the one that has the four insecticides in it. I'm told you can crush the leaves and put them in alcohol and spray to keep bugs away. I have not tried that yet. That's, that's a fantastic vine right there. Oh, fantastic vine, which is called cross vine. Good for a de stressor. Here's one, here's one of the same thing that's just come up. <laughs> this is my herb bed. But now, if that sun were not shining on it, that's a good picture of the uh, Asclepius tuberosa. And what does it do? It, it's milkweed, butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa for the butterflies. It was also used for pleurisy. Uh, and it was used, it's, uh, another common name for it is pleurisy root. When the butterflies eat it, it, it gives a very bitter, puts a very bitter taste in their skin, and uh, uh, the bugs won't eat the butterflies then. Butterflies are smart. It's another kind of Coreopsis, but I, I've let it get, uh, I haven't deadheaded it. What does deadhead mean? Okay. That means you pull off all these spent blooms.
cut them off or pull them off and it will bloom again. It will keep blooming as long as you keep pulling these off. I've been on vacation and I have not pulled these. That's what I need to do early in the morning. Bring a cup of coffee out of here and dead dead. This of course is another Rubecchia. These are native trees, but they're not blooming right now. What kind are they? Uh, this one is a cherry laurel. It is evergreen. And it blooms profusely. And bees, bees just cover it up. Cover it up. This one is a maple, a sugar maple. Of course, it does its show in the fall. First week in November. Are cedars native? Cedars are native, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I see them they're all very, over the United States. Yeah. Too. I love the smell. That's persimmon. Persimmon up here in front of us. One of those. Persimmon and cherry. They're both. They're, but they're not blooming, so. But anyway. That's a persimmon tree. And a cherry tree that's dying. The cherry has been used for centuries as a cough medicine are used in cough medicines too. And then the persimmons. Make great pies. Make great pies. <laughs> great pies, great breads, great puddings. Don't let nobody and trick you into leaves, eating one green. The, the big seeds that are in them, you crack the seeds open and they have a I do that every year. knife, fork, or spoon knife, that'll predict the winter. And mine did <laughs> this be, last winter. Did, okay. Yes. When that, when that happens, we'll on the seed, on the seed tour in the fall, we'll do that. I mean, everything around here is native. We we can talk about any and all of it, the fruits, and but but to, for today, that's all that's blooming. 